Hello, everybody. Okay, hello. Hope all of you guys are doing well. I'm doing well. Just so you know, today we have Enrico with us. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, everyone. Very, very fine. Also, hope the same about you two all. Yeah, so let's have Enrico introduce himself and then I think we can kickstart this interview. Good. So, in, in very few words, then I, I won't bother you. My, my current um, professional experience uh, is uh, with uh, cycling manufacturing. So, I'm uh, an entrepreneur since two years and a half now in, in the cycling business. So, basically, from uh, morning till night, I, I coordinate a group of people that uh, build bicycles. Um, and this is a very, a very uh, challenging task for me uh, since I, I come from a very different background. Um, I come from the automotive sector uh, where I was mainly a product manager, but also with experience in sales and dealer network development. Uh, so I, I, I try to, to bring my, my past professional uh, experiences and background into into my today's life uh, but the the sector and the, all the industry is it's quite different at the moment and facing actually very very nice challenges uh, the, the, the spread of uh, COVID-19 pandemic brought us uh, basically home for uh, for at least a couple of months here here in Italy then uh, the, the cycling industry literally uh, boomed after after the, the the pandemic spread, and and we are facing very high demand compared to very low availability of raw materials. So it's it's really uh, a big time for us uh, currently. So we we can enjoy it, uh, let's say every minute of it. That is amazing to hear. So. Um... Now, what I want to do is to like start from like the beginning, beginning, beginning. That is, you know, where were you born and how was your early childhood? Uh, well, I have to say uh, uh, I was a really happy kid. I grew up in a, in a small countryside village in the northern part of, uh, of, of Italy. Uh, let's say one hour, one hour south from, uh, from Milan. Uh, where my parents still uh, still live, and it was really, I mean, a uh, comforting zone. Um, very very happy childhood through all kindergarten, school uh, at every at every level. So it was really really uh, well. As I said, I was a really happy kid. Nothing nothing to to complain. I was riding. I start quite early riding bikes, so uh, I even. Um, experienced uh, almost 10 years as a junior professional cyclist with very bad uh, results at, at races, but still uh, bicycles are, are within me since, since a long time. That, that is very nice. Now, um, and when did you, and when did you like, was it through your teenagers that you decided that you want to be part of the locomotive um, industry? Or when, when really was that uh, point in your life that you realized that, you know, this is, this is where I want to be? Uh, well, actually, uh, as well as bicycles, uh, as any male kid, I guess, in Italy is uh, really keen and interested in, uh, in cars and motor vehicles. So it was a, uh, a big dream since since the beginning. I was really uh, fond of uh, of cars, and uh, well, I realized actually I, I wanted to work in the industry when I was at university. Uh, strangely enough, because I almost every day in the first year of university traveled with by train, and and the train passes uh, exactly uh, under this uh, this amazing building. Uh, of the company I worked with, so um, uh, that was like, uh, oh well, someday uh, I'd like to to be there in those offices, and actually it it turned out quite fine. I, I was able to get there. Uh, I spent uh, with that company almost seven years of uh, actually my first seven years of of professional uh, 
uh, life after after university and it was really 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 nice i mean uh, as any kid loving cars working for a car company is is really a nice thing uh, besides that it was really formative and uh, actually i, I can uh, use every every single um experience i had in that count in that uh, in that firm uh, in uh, in starting my uh, my own company right now so it was really really uh, nice and formative as as i said and uh, well um in a different life if if uh, there is uh, one more uh, i i think i i would like to do it again i mean no 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 regrets no no downside. So if I had the chance, I would start over and, and do the same thing. But Yeah. And, you know, everybody nowadays, and, you know, it's even when I see, you know, so many beautiful cars, that be luxury cars or, you know, cars that we see around as well. I'm like, oh my God, this is so cool. Right. But, you know, just making that shift from cars to cycles. I mean, how was, how was that all I would say? Because the thing is that I, I believe in sustainable living and I have been implementing sustainable living as much as I can. Um, and I feel like cycling is the most sustainable thing, right? But how was it for you? And you said that the COVID-19, it brought in, you know, more demand for cycles and, how is it because everybody's not looking for a car that's like their achievement for a lot of people so how is it selling you know cycles it's like cool i mean that's a cool thing to do yes uh well um let, let me start by saying that uh i think that people will always be seeking or looking around for for buying a car or having a car or just use a car um in their lives so i don't see actually a future with uh all bikes and no cars this this is not um i think this this, this is not the, the the future we are uh approaching um what what i see and what also the car industry has uh, demonstrated is that cars can be uh also sustainable uh, of course, uh, a bicycle is, is by definition a, a more sustainable means of transport than a car. Uh, but to some extent, also cars can be sustainable products because they are made by using uh, either recycled products or sustainable products. So products that are new, raw materials that are new, that can be used over and over again, so they, they are not polluting that way. Uh, looking at combustion engines, they can be uh, made very, very sustainable or switch to uh, electric engines that almost produce no, no carbon, carbon emissions. Almost all car manufacturers or the main players in, in, in the sector have demonstrated that they are invested and they, they have invested and they can produce cars that uh, are nearly to, to zero carbon emissions throughout, um, let's say, the, the world production line also, not, not, not just uh, as they are run by the owner, but also when the factory produced them. So uh, they have demonstrated they can be sustainable. I think they will demonstrate uh, day, day after day uh, even more. Uh, on the other hand, um, we have bicycles that uh, by uh, more than 200 years uh, they they are almost basically the same uh, they they born uh, a sustainable product and they continue to be inevitably uh, sustainable also uh, with uh, a few challenges still we have in the industry um, with with the booming of uh, electric bikes um, we, we have to deal with uh, with a certain responsibility in production and uh, let's say with the life cycle of the batteries, which can be um, not so sustainable if it's not engineered, produced and, and are used um, in a sustainable way. So 
we still have challenges in the industry also if uh, I have to say uh, more and more uh, easier than uh, than the cars industry and for me the flip between cars and, and bicycles is, is actually um, quite a comeback as I said I, I was cycling a lot during my my childhood and and then uh, actually with uh, you know um, so a kind of circumstances in in life that that sometimes happen uh, i had the chance to uh to to review some uh, let's say some some things in uh, or have new new thoughts uh, especially, uh, especially after i i had the chance to to attend uh one young world summit in in 2016 uh, with a lot of uh, interesting speeches and, and stimulating um, opinions, and well, um, after that you, you see you see things in life and in the world in general with with a new perspective. So I had something inside me that continually told me that you have to do uh, something more uh, in, in your life. You you are not uh, just um, uh, a product manager in a in a car industry, you you can uh, make a greater impact on uh, on your society. And this uh, thought was really uh, really small in the beginning. Then he he grew, and uh, also well, I had to face some not not um, very easy moments when when you, you you try to decide to leave something that is uh, your comfort zone that is uh, secure that is uh, let's say a lock nothing uh, can uh, can modify it to to launch yourself in a well in, in starting a company which by definition is not is nothing uh, really given so you have to build it yourself it's challenging it's tough and uh, it's not as comfort as uh, you know just going to work uh, every day, every morning, and and you get the, you get your pay at the end of the month for sure. So uh, it was something uh, that that took some time, but uh, evidently that uh, that voice was was really bigger than than anything else. And well, here I am, two two year and a half later, uh, after the the very first day of of my young company, here we are producing bikes and and the flip happened. Yeah. Now, one thing that I that I really really want to know that is that now from it is the idea that just comes in your head, right? And it can be inspired by a startup itself, it can be inspired by a thought about anything, honestly. You know, some uh, words and some things might trigger some thoughts that would lead to a, a, you know, a nice sustainable idea, business idea. So how was it that you got this idea? Uh, well, um, first of all, I, I think that yes, every one of us can be inspired uh, unless you have uh, nothing to, to be inspired about. I mean, uh, as any uh, ground soil, if it's desert, you, you can grow anything out of it. But if you are uh, in a way still uh, keen on uh, on taking something some new thought something anything um, within you that that it's new that is something different from from your status quo then you start you know thinking about it and elaborating it and something uh, is inevitable to to happen um, for me, actually, uh, as I said, it was not um, a switch, uh, zero to one, but uh, more of um, a progress, a, a path. Uh, I was still uh, working with that uh, car company after uh, One Young World 2016, and uh, something was already happening. For example, with um, a bunch of colleagues, we, we managed to, to launch um, a project where we basically included uh, the opportunity for uh, people with physical disabilities to attend uh, our driver training courses. So basically, they they follow the same um, 
the same program as uh, as any other attendance. So there was no difference in there. They were included. They were given the opportunity basically to uh, have a new life. I mean, uh, the, the, the thought at the beginning was, okay, they have for some reason, uh, physical disabilities, so they are not independent anymore. Basically, they, they stop driving cars because they doesn't feel safe or, or actually they, they couldn't do it. So we give them the opportunity to uh, basically regain back uh, a more normal life. I wouldn't say normal at all, but still given, giving them the, the instruments and the tools, uh, the knowledge to to steer their way back to, to having a, a normal life or as normal as, uh, as possible. So uh, this, I think, was the first step of um, realizing that with my uh, daily work or daily uh, contribution, uh, I had to uh, produce some positive impact, not only for the company I, I was working with, but also for, for the society. Then, uh, then as I said, the voice became bigger, and uh, and I decided basically to to, to abandon that uh, that industry and and to focus on on something that I could grow from the beginning and to steer basically in the direction I wanted uh, without any compromises. Since I mean the company is mine, so basically I, I decide. And uh, otherwise, in uh, any other companies that it's not yours, you have to, to deal, of course, with uh, strategies and with directions that you um, not always uh, decide on or, or, or can contribute to, to the fund. So it was a, a, at a point where I, I really decided that, okay, I'm, I'm not... Um, uh, let's say happy anymore uh, to do my my homework and, and still bring a positive impact. I really want to uh, to do something uh, something bigger, something mine that that I can really steer. So so I decided to to switch uh, to be an entrepreneur and and to build bicycles because basically I um, always uh, cared about mobility. And the bicycle is a fantastic mobility solution, and uh, it deserves a lot more space than uh, than it actually has right now in in the society. And and with the, the cyc with cycling with bicycles, there are um, a lot of uh, additional benefits that that come into into play, and uh, and basically are those that can really. Uh, turn our society to, to a better being. Amazing. I mean, one thing that, that, that really, you know, is something in common between us is that, you know, I mean, you've been to One Young World, you know, you've been to that. Um, and you're very lucky that you have been because I, oh my God, I'm going to go there so badly, but depends on, you know, when can you, because, you know, um, just look for the like the right time in life to like go there because I feel that time is now, but you know circumstances do matter. So now tell me all about your experience with One Young World, and I'd love if you can also tell the audience about what is One Young World. Uh, well, okay. Um, to sum up, it's it's really a fantastic experience. It, it's something that it's kind of hard to to describe because you have to leave it. Uh, and everyone, uh, uh, everyone that, that is there that can attend, uh, I'm sure uh, it uh, come out or go home with uh, a different uh, interpretation or a different feeling. So it, it can, it's really hard for me to, to describe it, I mean, universally, uh, because it's, it's a really, um, uh, an experience that that you live with your inside you you live with your heart more than with your mind so uh, for, for this reason for sure it's uh, nothing alike from one person to another um, to me uh, as i said it has been um, 
a really, really great experience. I'm really and truly thankful to the, that famous car company that uh, brought me there. So I was a delegate from, I was attending One Young World as a delegate from, from that company and uh, became ambassador after attending uh, the summit. Uh, well, you have uh, the amazing opportunity to be in the same room with thousands of other uh, young people coming from all over the world, uh, all over the industries, very different perspective, experiences, backgrounds, uh, exposed to uh, uh, a pool of uh, very important people that have um, change their society really they, they did it so uh, they come there uh, not to teach you or to tell how they did it uh, they just um, how to say they just uh, tell you a story uh, that you can interpret uh, in a way or in another according to your feelings your background your mindset uh, so uh, everything changes according to basically who you are uh, inside and i'm sure also people that um, attended any one year world summit maybe got home without any sparkle inside them uh, or maybe they didn't have any sparkle for uh, three four five years then something comes out later uh, everyone has his own timing to to process um, that kind of experience and I think that the, be the best that describes the, uh, what one young world is, uh, is if you have to get there, you have to be there, you have to attend it. Then you find yourself uh, what uh, the, the most proper definition of what young one, world, one young world is. Uh, to me, it was really amazing experience, really something that I discovered later on in my life really, really changed it. Uh, brought me to to a very uh, structured comfort zone to, to the opposite, but uh, I, I'm not scared about it. I'm really loving it because I, I see that I wake up in the morning and everything I do uh, without any um, exclusion brings something good for my society. And it is because we produce bicycles and bicycles are sustainable. So it's a sustainable uh, mobility solution that brings health into people and societies, but also because um, I had the chance to relaunch um, uh, an old company uh, that was going to close in one of the most uh, poor regions of Italy. And basically uh, by our daily business we we give uh, employment to people so uh, salaries to people so in in a way we also counterfeit um, what is going on in that area of Italy so strong unemployment low let's say economic levels and um, and also uh, people that are moving away from from that areas to to others in Italy where uh, there are more uh, job opportunities and uh, the economy is, is basically better and, uh, and stronger. Uh, I'm sure this, this situation cannot be compared to the other part of the world with the situation is, is more severe for sure, but uh, if we uh, close the focus on, on Italy uh, only, uh, th this is what's happening. We are giving uh, employment to people in a very uh, depressed economic area of, uh, of Italy. So this is just one of, of the positive impact we, we can achieve. I can achieve with my company. Uh, also, aside from the, of course, producing a sustainable mobility solution. Yeah, now that is something that's, that's very, very nice. Now that we're coming towards the end of the interview, first, I'd like to ask if somebody would want to buy, purchase one of the bike, uh, how can they do so? Now that is a process, and I'd love if you can explain that. Well, it's really easy. We are living... Um very uh, digital world right now so of course you can uh, visit our website 
uh, you can also see our bicycles on um, the major social media uh, right now in Italy. I think they are very well famous, like Facebook and Instagram. We have our company profile. So uh, every one of our followers, either it, it is a customer, it will be a customer, or it will never be a customer, but it's just a fan of bicycle brands, can see whatever we are up to. Uh, on uh, on the major social networks and of course um, our products on our website. So then that is for the digital world. Uh, since we still live in a physical world, uh, on the other hand, we distribute basically our product to uh, selected dealers. So we are really keen on. Uh, uh, on selected, uh, on selecting those dealers that can uh, evaluate really uh, our product. Still, it is an accessible product uh, uh, in terms of uh, of price point, uh, meaning that uh, bicycle is a sustainable mobility solution. In 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 my vision, uh, it will never be a positive impact on society if uh, that bicycle is a uh, really high top uh, of the range product uh, very 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 expensive so you will uh, respond to niche um, uh, to customer niches but uh, you're not going mainstream so the diffusion of the effect of the bicycle will be definitely um, limited uh, in, in its spread so in, in my vision bikes is sustainable bikes needs to be good quality but needs to be uh, accessible for everyone so we we are at that part of of the market and we also of course want um, our dealers to be uh, part of our vision and aligned to our vision so we select very keen um, physical bicycle shops that distribute our product uh, we of course are mm, uh, very present in uh, in Italy right now, but also planning to to further expand our reach uh, on on this uh, let's say B two B world. Of course, with the B two C world, we we are already connected basically uh, worldwide since uh, our social network profiles and and website are of course accessible from all over the world. So everyone. Uh, on this globe can can see and uh, and purchase our our products and of course we we are very happy if uh, we have not only Italian customers that are uh, interested Amazing. and appreciate our product. Mm. And what is the last message that you'd like to give out to all of the audience? Uh, well. Um, don't be afraid to make a change. Um, of course, uh, change is, uh, is challenging. Uh, change brings uh, anxiety. Change brings fear. This is uh, perfectly human. There is nothing to, to be scared. It's, it's part of the process. But don't uh, let these things uh, stop you. If, you. if you feel that you have a um, higher purpose, you want, you want to to achieve or to reach so go for it no, don't be afraid of uh, of what you you will find on on the road it won't be easy because it's not but uh, at the end um, you will see that it's all worth it so again go for it no no excuses if you feel something inside your heart you want to reach it you want to make um, a positive impact you want to achieve something good do it. Don't. There's no reason to, uh, let's say, to, to to stop yourself. Of course, you have to to find uh, the, the the mix of of solution. You have to put the pieces together. It's something that is not happening from night to till morning. It, it, it's a process. It's long. It's tough. But at the end, it's like a race. When you you are, uh, when you arrive at the finish line and you are first, then that that's the feeling. That, that you get when uh, when you see that you you are doing something that produces something good, of course for you, but also for 
uh, for your society. So you, you are not, let's say, on this. Uh, we are all uh, passing by on this planet. So we, we are not uh, living forever on it. So uh, you have to, cho to choose whether you want to be a good impact, a neutral impact, or a negative impact. Then, of course, you have to act accordingly. If you want to be a positive impact, then then you have to force yourself to to go over your fears and 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 go for it and 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 get what you want. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for coming in. It was it was an amazing message, I must say. And with that, I'm gonna end this. Uh, you know, show of ours. Um, it was amazing. It was amazing having you on. And I will, when, as soon as I upload this interview, I'm going to leave the link to the website of, for the cycles and the business that he owns. So you can check it out. And yeah, and then you guys can, you know, take it from there. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you on.